The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Good morning. You know, ever since I was uh, very young, I have always loved to sing. And I remember even as a kid when I would go to Mass with my family, my older brother and sister would always kind of poke me in the side and say, stop singing so loud, you're embarrassing us. <laughs> I've always had a great joy, I've always loved to sing. I have to admit, like, you know, I love singing even now as a priest. I love music, it surprises me this is not the point of the homily, but it does surprise me when people in the congregation don't sing. Because, you know, singing is part of our worship, and you serve your neighbor by singing. When you get in a church where everyone is singing, you can really feel the Spirit of God in that place. So I encourage you to sing well and joyfully to the Lord. But because of my love for singing, I've always been in choirs and I remember in high school, I had a very dear friend, her name was Barbara, and we hung out together, we did all kinds of things, we were in choir together, and we sang duets together, it was, a, it was a big school, so there were about 40 people at least in the choir, and even though there were, you know, 20 girls singing in the women's section, I could always hear her voice. Even though they blended beautifully, she was not singing louder than everyone else, because we are such good friends, if I concentrated, I could always pick her voice out from every other voice because I knew her voice and I knew her so well. I mention that because today in the gospel, the Father of heaven gives us a beautiful message. He says, this is my beloved son listen to him. And if we're going to listen to the voice of Jesus, it really means we have to know his voice. We have to be able to pick his voice out from all the other voices. There are all kinds of songs that are being sung in our society, and many of them are not the song of Jesus Christ. Even though they seem to blend together, we have to be able to listen and hear which is the voice of Jesus. Now, I hope that there are many voices in your life that are in accord with the voice of Jesus. I hope that your spouse, that your family members, that your friends, that this community, I hope the homilies from Mass, that all of these things work together in order to augment the voice of Jesus in your lives. But there are also voices that are out there that are in contradiction, that deny the voice of Jesus and say 
a message that is opposite, and we have to be able to recognize Jesus' voice and his message so that all these other messages can be laid aside and we can follow with purpose the voice of the Lord and the direction that he gives to each one of us. It's kind of interesting, you know, you can think about it, there are so many slogans that we hear out there, and we sort of immediately, like on first hearing these slogans, they sound good. But then when we think about them for a moment, if we know Jesus, we know that these slogans really, they are not in accord with Jesus. Just a few to think about. More and more I hear people saying, you have to find your own truth and follow it. You have to find your truth. And I think to myself, nope, that's not how the gospel works. That's not what Jesus taught us. There is one truth, and that truth is not a thing. That truth is a person the person of Jesus Christ. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's not one truth for me and a different truth for everyone out there. Truth is not relative. Truth is the person of Jesus. And if a message is not in accord with that truth, which is the only truth, then it's not truth at all, but in fact a lie. Follow your truth is not a truth. It is a slogan that is at variance with the voice of Jesus. We want to live in accord with the voice of Jesus. How about another one we hear often, right? Love is love. That sounds good. It really does. It sounds good. Love is love. Yes, all love is beautiful. But it's a slogan that is actually not in accord with the message of Jesus Christ. Not all love is equal. In fact, there are some loves that are a counterfeit of love. And in fact, they are a lie. And they do not manifest the true love that God intends. Love, real love, is sacrificial. Real love is giving. Real love is service. And other loves that are selfish and self-seeking are a counterfeit. And they are not love at all, and they do not deserve the name. One more. I'm pro-choice. That sounds good, right? That sounds great, yes. I'm in favor of people being able to choose, but in this case, that's a slogan, and these slogans and these ideas that fill the ambiance of our society are so often a lie. And it is only if we can hear the voice of Jesus that we can recognize the difference between those voices that are lies and those voices that speak the truth. Jesus is the truth. And it's easy for us to get confused. In the gospel today, even our dear friend Peter got confused. I love Peter. He's so great because he shows our broken humanity and God still did so much with him. So when I hear about Peter, I'm like, oh, thank God for Peter. There's hope for all of us, right? St. Peter. And today, St. Peter also got confused. He's up there on that mountain and Jesus transfigures and then talking with him Moses and Elijah and Peter says this is great hey Jesus how about this I got an idea let's build three little houses one for you one for Moses and Elijah you guys stay up here shimmering right you stay up here shining like that with all this bling and glory I'm gonna go down the mountain I'm gonna get a bunch of people we're gonna come back here and when they see you all shiny like this they're definitely gonna believe and everything will be perfect and easy. (laughs) See, even Peter, he wanted to reach the resurrection without the trial, without the suffering. He wanted glory. He wanted fame. He wanted an easy path. But it wasn't the path of Jesus because our friend Peter was listening to a voice of pride rather than the voice of Jesus. We can be so easily confused by the many voices that are out there. The only way that we can make sure that we know the voice of Jesus is if we follow that example of my friend. I could always pick her voice out because I knew her very well. And by picking out her voice, I could listen to the melody that she was singing. That's how it has to be with us and Jesus. We have to know the song of Jesus. Jesus must be our most intimate and our best friend. And if we know Jesus in this intimacy of our hearts, we will always 
recognize his voice and the voices that are in contradiction to us. And so the church, my brothers and sisters, today invites us once again, open your hearts and your ears to the voice of Jesus. Know him as a friend and as your savior, that you may hear his voice and follow after him in joy.